I'm John Manzella, and I'm an author, speaker, and nationally syndicated columnist. Uh, the topic I'll be discussing uh, today is labor, skills, and workforce. Well, there's a whole variety of reasons. Uh, number one, unemployment is at an extremely low rate. So, very obviously, when there's fewer participants or fewer people out in the workforce, it's more and more difficult for companies to find and hire them. But there's a whole number of other reasons. For example, one out of seven men between ages 25 and 54 are long-term unemployed. They're not on the work in the workforce. They're either on disability, on opioids, uh, on the couch, and there's a whole number of reasons for that, but that has dropped the participation rate by some estimates by 20%, 20% of the overall lower participation rate. A whole number of other reasons. Baby boomers are retiring in droves. Each day, 10,000 people turn 65, which is retirement age. Unfortunately, when they leave, they take their skills with them, and that's contributing to a skills deficit as well as a labor shortage. There's a whole number of other reasons. Women, for example, their participation rates peaked in 1999, and now they're slightly declining. Overall, men and women, their participation rates are decreasing. Well, there's a whole number of things we could, we could do to address these concerns. Uh, for one, companies can offer higher wages, which we're beginning to see now. But aside from that, they could offer greater or more attractive benefits. Uh, another strategy is to really accommodate the needs of millennials. And I have four millennials, so I always joke and say, when I was growing up, the key was to maybe in three years get a promotion and get a, an office by the window. Well, millennials want to know what they're going to get next Thursday. And Friday's a great beach day, so they may want to take Friday off. Now, don't get me wrong. Millennials are very hard workers, but the culture is very different than, say, my generation. So companies need to adapt to this new generation and offer benefits that are attractive to this generation. Another strategy is to hire older workers. Um, as we all know, people tend to retire in their mid-60s, but people are living healthier, longer lives. So it behooves companies to go back out and, and solicit or attempt to bring in some of those uh, older folks that have tremendous skills. That's another strategy. And a major strategy, of course, is to um, involve immigration. The administration has a particular policy to reduce immigration. I'm talking about legal immigration. My thought is that we need to expand legal immigration. And I'm talking about immigration reg regarding skills at all levels, from the highest levels, the R&D levels in Silicon Valley, and at the lower levels, in the farm levels. Out here in Palm Springs and in this region, farms out in California, throughout California, can't find labor. And as a result, they can't harvest their products. Many of these farms, I'm told, are going out of business, or the cost of their produce is going up. Uh, if you can't find the skills you need, companies can't grow. And if they can't grow, they have to either move to where the skills are or reduce revenues. Lower immigration levels overall will hurt American businesses. Now, immigration really has been the lifeblood of the American economy. And they're helping the population to grow in a positive direction. Some countries like Germany, for example, have a negative population growth rate. And that's very bad news for their economic growth. That means they have fewer consumers and fewer producers. Immigration helps the U.S. economy to grow. That means we have more consumers and more producers, and that's very good. So the bottom line is if companies can't find the skills they need, they can't grow. If they have the skills, they can grow, and that's very good for the U.S. economy overall.